Learning to play guitar riffs from songs you love is absolutely one of the best ways to learn how to play guitar. So in this video, I'll be sharing five of the riffs that taught me guitar and talk about what I learned from each one. This video is sponsored by Moor Audio and I'll be using their new Hornet 05i Intelligent Amp for all of my tones throughout this video. It's a really fun and portable amp and I will tell you more about it later on. But for now, let's get into the first riff. So that was the intro and main riff from Paranoid by Black Sabbath. This was a riff I learned pretty early on in my guitar playing, about a year into playing I learned and covered the full song and it was definitely a learning experience. For one, once I learned the basics of the riff and tried playing along with the actual song, it just sounded completely wrong and I wasn't sure where I was going wrong. As far as I knew, the song was in E standard tuning, so I had my guitar tuned to that, but it just didn't sound good when I was playing with it. I now know and I figured out then as well that the song is actually just recorded a bit out of tune, so to get your guitar to sound correct with the song, it has to actually be a bit sharp. So that was new for me. I hadn't really come across songs that were recorded like that before. Another thing this riff helped me with is really making sure to listen critically and figure things out, even if you're watching lesson videos or looking at tabs. So a lot of lessons on YouTube I came across actually had this intro part here, this part. A bit wrong, they just had it like this. So it's a small difference, but it does make a difference and I'm glad this really reminded me to keep my ear in mind when I'm learning things. Another thing that learning this riff and also making a cover and posting it to YouTube taught me was that I really needed to work on my palm muting. There's obviously a lot of palm muting in this riff and at the time when I posted the cover I thought it was palm muting but I was really just resting my palm so close to the bridge that it was barely doing anything and you couldn't really tell that I was actually palm muting in the cover, so I got a lot of comments really quickly informing me that I was doing it wrong. This was of course a bit upsetting at the time, but long term it really made me think about how I was palm muting. I adjusted where my hand was on the strings and realized the differences moving my hand up and down made to the tone of the palm mute. So I think it helped me a lot long term to learn this riff and kind of mess it up in a cover on YouTube. <laughs> That was the main riff from She Is My Sin by Nightwish. Nightwish is one of my all time favorite bands and when I learned this song and this riff about a year and a half into my guitar playing, it really helped me a lot. At the time, this was probably one of the fastest riffs I had attempted to learn and I remember really struggling for a long time trying to get it up to speed with the original song. This riff was also a bit tricky for me because it alternates between palm muted and not palm muted notes on adjacent strings. So all of the notes on the A string are supposed to be palm muted and the notes on the D string are not. So it's like this. So working on this riff really forced me to think about muting and how I was doing it and thinking about my hand positioning so that I was muting one string but letting the other string ring out as needed and I think it was really valuable for that. In addition to learning this riff, I also actually learned the whole She Is My Sin song and there were a couple other areas that it really helped me in. For one, the song actually featured my first ever pinch harmonic during the solo and I was so happy when I was able to nail that at least some of the time. There's also a quite fast palm muted galloping section in the song and that was new to me at the time and I wasn't very good at it. I remember really struggling to get it down for the cover and I did okay enough 
to make the video, but it definitely got me working on that gallop technique as well. And it's something I improved over time after that. I was really proud of myself at the time for getting this down. And yeah, I think it's a great one to learn, especially if you are a Nightwish fan. Now quickly, before we get into the next riff, let me take a moment to tell you about the amp I've been using for all of my tones throughout this video, the Moor Hornet 05i. This little amp is surprisingly powerful, super portable, and I've just had a lot of fun with it so far. Like the larger Moor SD30i amp I previously demoed, this is a digital modeling amplifier that uses Moor's awesome effects modeling technology to offer a huge range of different tones and effects. There are 52 different included amp models and 49 different effects, and you can tweak and combine things to your liking. On the amp itself, you can switch between four different built-in presets just by pushing on the button on the front of the amp like this. But you can totally customize those four presets, set them to whatever you'd like using their app on Android or iOS. This amp is very simple and easy to use. It just has the button on the front for toggling effects and changing volume. Then it has a guitar line in port, of course, and then a USB-C port. The USB-C port is used for charging. The amp has a five hour battery life once it's fully charged. And you can also use it for recording to your smartphone or computer. Throughout this video, you've been hearing the audio from recording from this amp to my desktop computer using USB-C. But I think where this really shines is you can bring it on the go with you, bring a cable, plug the amp into your smartphone and hit record, and you'll get really nice sounding guitar audio directly to your smartphone video so you don't have to sync it up or anything like that. And it just makes it really easy to quickly record on the go, make social media content, record your practice, whatever you're doing. And I think that's a really fun feature. The Hornet also sounds surprisingly good out loud in the room given its size. Here's a sample of what it sounds like with just the camera audio in the room. Now you have to keep in mind, this is only a five watt amp with a two inch speaker, so it won't compete in terms of sound with a larger amp like the SD30i, but it is so extremely portable, and I don't think you'll be disappointed if you have reasonable expectations given its size. It also has Bluetooth connectivity so that you can play back backing tracks or songs to jam along with. I think this amp is a really fun option to consider if you're looking for something small and portable, but you still want to play out loud and you want ease of recording, lots of different tones. It has a lot going for it. So if you're interested in learning more, I'll have a link in the description. Thank you again to Moore for sending out the amp and sponsoring this video. And now, Onto the next riff. For this next one, I need to grab a guitar in D standard. <laughs> So that was an abbreviated version of the main riff from Square Hammer by Ghost. As you probably know, Ghost has recently been my favorite band, and I think there is so much you can learn from learning a bunch of their songs, Square Hammer included. Square Hammer was actually the first song I learned all the way through and posted a cover of on YouTube, and I was really proud of it at the time. This riff and song overall is not too complicated to play, but it has a bunch of different techniques going on, lots of things to work on and learn, like palm muting, alternate picking, sliding, and power chords, so it was a really great one for me to learn as I was learning guitar, and it's just such a fun song to play. The beginning of the riff here. <laughs> It's pretty simple to get down, but it's a great exercise for using all of your fingers. It's also a good one to think about how you can lift your fingers off the string to mute notes so that you don't have them ringing out together. So you have in this part here, instead of subtle difference, but it can make a big difference depending on what you're playing. This part here is probably my favorite part of the riff, but also the most tricky to get down. And it just sounds so cool, that slide from the third fret up to these big stretches here and 
yeah, it's just such a cool sound. It was definitely tricky to get that slide down to make sure it was accurate about where it was supposed to go. And then also hit the next space apart notes there. I think the problem for me when I was learning this was that I was really focusing on making sure I got that big stretch there. So that meant that sometimes my accuracy with the slide wasn't quite correct and I landed on the wrong note. So it was a really good exercise in working on moving across the fretboard quickly and also just hitting that big stretch there. I think when I was first learning this riff, I probably played this part here with my third finger like this. But I think it's actually easier to use your second finger for that note there. It just makes the stretch a little bit easier. I remember having so much fun learning this riff and I was so happy when I put it all together and learned the whole song as well. I was able to make my first ever cover. It was just a huge moment for me and I will be forever grateful to this song. <laughs> electric guitar riff from Hearts Crazy on You, and it's actually really the first guitar riff I ever learned. I have a clip of me playing this riff on my fourth day of learning guitar, and I remember being so excited when I got it down and was able to play it along with the original song. It was the first time I had played music along with the song, and it was just an incredible feeling. So this riff will always have a special place in my heart, no pun intended. This riff, although it is quite simple, can teach you a lot, especially when it's your fourth day of playing guitar. It has a mix of notes across three strings, so it got me thinking about how to actually do that with my pick and not miss the strings. And it also includes open strings as well. But I think the most important thing this riff taught me was just how fun it is to play along with songs and learn songs you love. So it really motivated me to continue learning. And I'm really happy I learned this riff very early on on day four in my guitar journey. This is actually a riff that if someone who's never played guitar before wants to try out a guitar, I will show them how to play because it's quite simple to get it down and it sounds musical and recognizable very quickly. So yeah, I think this is a great riff to learn early on. Now onto the next one. For this one, I'm going to add in some drums from the amp. <laughs> So that one was a bit different, although I'm sure you've heard it before. That is a guitar adaptation of a classical music piece called The Mountain King. I learned this quite early on in my guitar playing. It was an exercise I came across on YouTube and I practiced this a lot. It really helped me to get down alternate picking because when I first started learning this, I hadn't really done alternate picking at all, but it was something I was conscious of and this was a great exercise for me to work on that through. I'm not sure if this is how I played it at the time, but this riff can also help with inside picking, this part here. We're kind of going back and forth between the A string and the E string. You can kind of just keep your pick in between the two strings and pick back and forth. So this has a good mix of doing that and alternate picking and even just economy picking in general. I remember playing this riff a ton, just trying to increase the speed for fun. I wasn't playing with metronome at the time, although probably should have been, but it was really fun just to see how fast I could play it cleanly. And that did help me to improve my speed overall. Learning this riff also helped me to start thinking about the fretboard more and about how I can move things around the fretboard because it involves lots of octaves and the major and minor scale. So for instance, this part here is the same as this part here, except this part is played an octave higher from the first part. And I think this was actually my first introduction to octaves. And the same thing is true for this part and this part here. So yeah, this was really useful to think about how I can move things around the neck and where the octaves are and how you can find them. This part here 
was also really good for working on stretching out my pinky and my hand in general. I think when I was first learning this riff, I couldn't quite make this stretch. So I couldn't do that like this. I think I had to move my hand up and down like and that was definitely less efficient, but it got me thinking about how I could actually make that stretch to make it more efficient. And it's still actually a good exercise for working on that. So there you have it, five more riffs that really helped me learn guitar. It's been a ton of fun going back down memory lane, thinking about how I felt at the time when I was learning these riffs and these songs. And I hope that some of these are helpful for you as well if you're just starting out. Let me know in the comments what riffs helped you learn guitar. I'm curious to hear what ones you learn from. And thank you again to Moor Audio for sponsoring this video and sending me out their new Hornet 05i amplifier. It's really fun. And again, if you're interested in learning more, I'll have a link in the description. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.